to be honest, I have no idea if I'm online or not. Um, but the cameras work. <laughs> That's something. Um, yeah, let me check. And I think the microphone. I always have problems with the microphone. So here, tell me I have a good connection. Um, wait, I should. I should sh change something with the connection. Um, no, it is using Evernet. Okay, that looks good. Um, maybe I should turn around so you see something. I can monitor everything here. So <laughs> when I look in this way, like this, then I'm then I'm checking what the computer is doing. Um, it is moving. Um, and when I look here, I have the cam down here. Um, the overhead cam is here, and this is the face cam. So, what I am doing today, I can see myself, it is weird. Um, yeah, the other cam is also a smartphone. Um, yeah, we are building, or I am building, another Raspberry Pi mobile gaming, retro gaming machine with batteries and other things. Uh, this time, I get a little bit more thought in the charging circuit because someone asked me to build one for for him. Um, and everything that I built before, I could not give it away. I could not give it to another person because um, the, with the charging, you need a special charger or it was very, yeah, not many thought in these things. So this time I put some thought in, this, in the charging and that's why it comes up to a yeah another board there's a little bit of lag in the live but it should be okay i think so um not sure if some people are here yeah, maybe it takes a while i'm not so popular <laughs> um this is better so i need to check the view and to be honest i have no idea to how to zoom in so this is the little board um, that i built with perf board and Diet. The funny fact is, um, it is combination of bought parts, or parts I have bought a while ago, I have in my stock, and parts salvaged from so many things. And I will tell you from what I salvaged them. Okay. Um, yeah, for the charging, I need to explain a little bit. Um, should I already? No. Okay. The charging voltage will be 12 watt. It comes from a PC power supply and it goes to a, one of those DC DC converters. Uh, this is one where you can adjust the voltage and the ampere, the current. Because I want to charge with constant current, of course, it's not a lithium ion battery. The battery I use is this. It, this comes, the cells here comes from a laptop, broken laptop. Um, it's okay. It's 2S configuration and it always has a built in BMS underneath this. It's a battery protection module for overcharge, over discharge, and over current. So the, pe the pack is already very safe. It has beefy wires, so it can get a little bit power. And to charge it, I'm using one of these DC DC modules set to 8.4 watt, a little bit less, and to 2.5 amp for the charging. Uh, and with two and a half amp, it can charge and also run the Raspberry Pi uh, because it's 8.4 and not 5 volt. And yeah, it's very efficient, this thing. So, but the problem was, one of the problems when I'm testing it, I hooked up four multimeters to test input voltage, output voltage, input current, output current, charging current and such things. And I figure out even when I'm, when I unplug the, power supply, the battery um, just feed back. Um, so the voltage go back into the module and it takes about 50 milliamp. And so the battery will train without any reason. Uh, of course, I could just add a switch to switch between charging and using, but it should be easy for another, for another person to use it, not for a geek like me. So I just said, okay, get a relay and why should I buy a relay? I have a lot of old stuff. And so on one of my old stuff, I found this. It's, 
it's an original Siemens flach relay. And when I looked for the data sheet, I wanted to know if it works with 12 volt. I found out these things are very expensive. A Bose uh, old new, new old stock is about 20 euro for those little things. And that is crazy. I have four or five of it found on a board from an old industrial machine. So I use this. It um, has two contacts um, on and off. So, but the weird thing is, one side is like uh, normally on uh, this and this contact, and the other side is this and this contact. So it's cross, and this take me crazy. I thought this is not working, and I get another one out, and it was working. It was just me not looking carefully. So, so just. Um, at a relay. The relay was connected like, okay, you plug in the 12 volt from DC, DC, and it just um, closed the pass to the battery. Here's the battery. But then I realized when I unplug, the relay doesn't fall off, as it doesn't switch off, because the back voltage or the voltage that comes back from the module from the output to the input was high enough in the current also that the relay stay on. So I added two diodes and this diode is also coming from something else. It's this diode in the TO220 case. It comes from a power supply. I thought it was an AT power supply from a computer or something else. Uh, very useful. So now when you plug in the DC voltage, it switch on the relay and okay um, i use the negative pass because of it has a common cathode course yeah it has a common cathode not a common anode so then the pass goes to the relay the relay switch on connects the battery to the charger and the other pass switch on the charger because the charger also need power and then it charges the battery until it reads 8.4 volt or you unplug it and then the relay switch off and disconnect the battery from the charging unit. So many things for just charge a battery, but it's okay. So it's mm, easier to use for someone who's not an electronic. You can see I have two um, of these models. Of course, the Raspberry Pi needs about five volt. Uh, the display I will use also. And so I get a second module connected to the battery via a switch. Of course, you need a power switch. And I set up this module to 5.5 volt. I always get a little bit higher than 5 because on the uh, wiring you have also a little bit loss. And when you exactly uh, go to 5 volt, often the Raspberry Pi shows this little um, cross. Uh, let me check the screen. Uh, shows a little cross that it has not enough power. So I just um, set it to 5.5 volt. It's totally okay for the Raspberry, makes no problem with it, doesn't get any order or um, some other issues, so but it doesn't show the yellow sign for I have not enough voltage. So this is the model, one of the parts. Oh, let me see. I think I set it to fix focus. Ah, wait, I have the second cam here. <laughs> uh, sometimes, okay. Here's the module, and it has a lot of connectors. So I also draw this, that it shows where are the connectors for what. So like. Battery in, um, the power to the Pi, the power to the display, the, um, from the switch, and the DC inject. And it looks a little bit messy. This is because I need some isolation. You will see when we put it together. Um, something else in the plan? No, uh, this is the case design, one of the case designs. I thought I'd draw a lot of pictures. That's the other side, and a lot of more paper. So this goes there starting with the case or oh, should i show you the other part no we'll start with the case and then we go through the parts when we reach them so let me see i think i can change this a little bit maybe i should put this on the other side no uh, oh someone watching no oh can you help huh i think this is something like i have no idea what help you need um the Raspberry Pi. Yes, should. 
No, I start to assemble the case, a few parts of the case. This we don't need yet. I would like to see what I'm getting out or what I show here. Um, let me switch back to OBS, it's faster. So, this is the frame for the display. And this is the bottom. Uh, no. Yeah, I think we start with this. Um, in the bottom or in the bottom of the case, I still left, or I have left some parts like the joystick port. It's one of these nice four port, um, like aircraft connectors. I like them. The DC in port, it's better to show it like this, maybe. Maybe someone recognizes it. Yes, it's from a Nintendo Wii. Um, I take I some broken Nintendo Wii and they have this nice charging port, this nice DC port and because I'm also using an original Nintendo Wii power supply I have also some of this the port is very helpful, so, uh, very useful so I don't need to cut and put something else on there I'm too fast and this is just glued in so that is why I didn't remove it and there I'm too lazy to remove this so, and here is the switch for the switch. I have a 3D printed part. I hope I bring it down. Oh, we'll check it later. On the. Maybe like this. On the bottom, you see here the place for the battery with the foam so it stays nicely inside. The DC in connector, something, something. The vent holes, maybe from this side. And this is also a recycled part. My good old trusty, trusty, uh, Acer V3771G something something notebook. After eight years of very good service, very powerful, this old machine it was also, it was eight years old. Um, I7 third generation, third generation. It just stopped working. Um, really something with the MOSFETs for the, um, power supply. And I wanted a new one. So I didn't bother with any search for measuring or something i just say okay now it's time for a new one uh, that's again an ASOP. so and it has underneath the bottom has this um this this mesh before the um holes for ventilation and i thought oh good part i can reuse it so oh this camera is better you see we have Wii parts, we have parts from old, very old stuff, we have stuff from old laptops. I'm not sure where I get this switch here. I have no idea from where it is. It's just in one of these boxes behind me. There are so many, many small parts. So, and then where are the 3D printed parts? Here. Garbage, of course. So I need the hinges. These are 3D printed. I downloaded the design from Thinkiverse. I didn't make this. I didn't make myself um, because because you can get very nice designs on Thinkiverse. I think everyone knows this side, and I like them. Um, I resize them always with different projects. Um, and this is the first thing we add, we add, we throw, we put, we throw in to the case. And I need four screws for this. No, eight. Um, for more structural integrity, integral. So that it doesn't wobble, I have added a lot of reinforcement in the case. And that's the first thing we will do. I cannot stop looking to the side here. So, are people watching? Oh, I should not always look there. Wrong screwdriver. This one is better for this. So. 
Uh, by the way, these screws are not recycled. These screws I I bought a while ago in a hobby shop. Um, I think it was Opitech. They have a lot of these small wood woodworking things. And here in Germany, they are well known for um, material for schools, for school things. Um, but I like to buy screws or something like this because in Baumarkt or in the department store, you don't find find the small things. You only find a big one, and I want a small one. I don't want a big one. And this size I didn't have recycled, but later there will be also recycled screws. So next, um, I think yes, I have to get this part. This is the um, frame for the keyboard. Uh, even with a gaming system, it will have a keyboard uh, because you can also install Raspbian if you want. But it's more fun like this. Um, here you have, or oh, I just cut in little indents for the keyboard. So then place the keyboard here. Get five screws. And here is a trick because underneath is something and you can make long screw damage. But I don't need this very short one. I need the one that I cut. Shit. <laughs> there. There. Very important. One shorter screw goes here in the middle. Otherwise, it can cause problems because then it sticks through and you could screw it into the HDMI cable yeah, somewhere else. Not a good idea. So, and then I need four more normal size. Yes. I have the small ones, but how do I forget where I use the small ones? Oh, we'll see it. Uh, by the way, I tried to paint it the uh, screws black. Doesn't work well because I'm not good in painting. Um, so I'm looking for another kind of screw. Can someone tell me how is the audio? I have no idea how the audio is. Um, the new laptop has a better microphone array, but I really should get a good microphone. But I'm lazy bone. So next step, um, the frame for the screen. It has also a hole for the speaker and it has a little amplifier and the cable is attached to it. So this is not to be moved. And here I have to keep the um, sequence. First, the power plug. Otherwise, and I put first the HDMI cable, it won't fit. Uh, the H HDMI. The HDMI cable is also a little bit special, as you can see, uh, because I never found a short cable with micro HDMI on one side and HDMI on the other side, and so I always run in trouble. That's why I just make my own one. I cut two of and then just Solar and soldering into my cable is not really not my favorite. Oh, it should align it. Alignment. Um, I hope the camera has autofocus. I'm not sure. Otherwise, it will look very screwed up. But I'm sorry. Not really. Uh, when else should we talk or can we talk? Can I talk? There. It sound. Oh, the sound is good. Thank you, Joel. Jewel Adams. Oh, that is good. First time the sound is not, not, not messy. So, uh, there's still one problem. There's no, and I, I will use a little cord or something. So, these two parts are together now. I can go ahead with assembling first cable management. Cable management is important. Um, I can go ahead with assembling the screen stuff. So this is an um, seven inch, thousand uh, one thousand twenty four by six hundred um, screen with IPS. 
so I like IPS. Um, I really recommend if you buy a laptop or a display, just get one with IPS. Don't stick with this terrible other technique. You will have always the angle you look on it, you will have the. No, not a good idea. Should not do this. So, the display is in. And. Oh, this is also dark. Well, this is not recycled. For this, I need some little plastic parts. This is not 3D printed, this is just um, some plastic and has little cutouts to hold the display in place. Ah, and for this I needed three short screws, otherwise you will get a well-known long screw damage. And I don't want to do this. Because the longer screw will stick through the wood and make it you know, look not nice. And the display doesn't need so much force to hold down. Because it is supported by the back. And you see I have some modifications to the display. There are two connectors here. A cable here, the cable there and there. Um, I always modify the things, uh, even the Pi is modified, as you will see. Um, so, for my need, or for my, how I use it. So, it's never stopped. <laughs> this place is in. Hmm. This cable is the power cable for the, uh, yeah, it's the power cable for the amplifier. Oh, by the way, this amplifier is also from something, something. I thought it was, I think it was a little computer speakers recycled, of course. So, and there's the speaker. The speaker also very old, um, Altec Lansing. Um, looks nice. And this comes from an active speaker or active box. Um, I got from someone. That was also broken, of course, but the speakers were still good. And now I need my clue. Sekundenkleber auf Deutsch. There. This time I tried a cheap one. Um, always get an expensive one, but why not get a cheap one? Maybe I mess everything up with this. Oops, so of course I will mess up. I know that I will mess up something. Um, the speaker was a little bit too high because my way to build something is just make the case and then see what fits in. And the speaker was a little bit too, too, too high. So I just remove a little bit wood from underneath. And now it fit. Also the the lid. I used sub. Yes, sub CA clue. Uh, it's very difficult to buy uh, the real CA clue. You only only in Germany or in the um, department store Bauhaus. You won't even get this kind of CA. And the good one, I also have somewhere. Um, you can only order online. There's no shop here where you can buy it. It's uh, terrible, I tell you. Um, sometimes I prefer the uh, very liquid one, and then other times I like the not so liquid one, so the gel type. And to get an activator or the thing to, to speed it up, it is oh yeah, you can only get it in special shops. So the power to the display comes with this little connector that plugs in here. And this is for something else. And there is the HDMI. Everything plugged in nice, almost. And then I need a lid. Mm, there's some writing in it. 
I need to calculate the resistor for this. Um, this is a little batch. 3D printed um, TSE MK2, um, TS Electronics Mark II, because this is the second one in this kind of design. The audio. And to have. It has to go before HDMI, otherwise, you cannot plug it in. So, cable management. Now, this, uh, here you can also see the indent for the speaker, otherwise, it won't fit. Plug it in, plug it in, in time. To close another six screws. Two, three, four, five, six. The design is very nice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, it's I have a bigger one built before, but with a very large battery. But this is the one that was not. I cannot uh, give it away or give it to someone else because it's almost. Yeah, you need an an, an lab power supply to charge it, so this is much easier to charge, you just plug it into the um, the Wii charger, uh, the Wii power supply. Other guy who asked me for this is Daniel Faust, he is an owner of a little toy shop in our city here in Neuwied, and it's funny, Neuwied, um, yeah, it's not easy to buy something, and he just was brave enough to build up this little shop. And you can get the usual toys there, like Lego or Duplo or Playmobil. But he also is for, and this is his main specialized, he is for um, a little bit retro gaming. But most of it, what he has is this uh, Star Wars figurines, this little figurines. And oh my gosh, he has a lot of them and selling them. And it's very funny, those things, and very expensive. And he see this um, a while ago, or the big one, and he just wanted one. I say no, it's not possible. Maybe when I build again some, we can talk about it. But oh, um, looks like YouTube has a little problem. I don't know what widget. Oh, Vorschlag. Um, oh, I'm maybe I'm streaming with too much, too high bitrate. It tell me I have a good internet connection, so should be not so big problem. And I don't want to stop it, so I just go ahead with it. it tell me something. It has to buffer to buffer, buffer buffer. Uh, not sure if this is so soon if you can really see this problem hmm and I have no idea where to change where to change this um, Oh, maybe I have to change it in OBS. Stream, I should settings, stream. No. Oh, there. Maybe 8000 is still enough. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Maybe it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, then I, it's only me who has a lag or get the message. So, these are the pieces in the button. No, I need the. This is the board for the keyboard. The keyboard is also re not really recycled. I bought it for this reason. Um, you get very cheap. Um, cases for 7 inch tablet universal cases not the Bluetooth ones, I don't want to use Bluetooth, you have to couple it and I don't want this, so it's just one with a micro USB connector about 10 bucks here 
and you just remove the case and you have a nice keyboard for Raspberry Pi projects. This is the one for 7 inch and I also have one, this is it's also a better feeling from typing, very nice one. This was about 12 dollar or 12 euro and if you're looking for a small keyboard you won't get it for 12 euro, not this size. So very good source is this um, universal cheap Chinese keyboard cases, uh, keyboard tablet cases. But not Bluetooth one. Bluetooth you have to um, you have to connect or to search, discover, whatever, and it's a pain in the ass. So I just go to the cable variant, remove the parts, and recycle them. And this is the keyboard controller. So. I can use this. Okay, now it says very good quality stream. I hope my batteries hold it like the heck will hold a while. So um next step is the power distribution board. It's this one. And I remember I have to uh, this goes on this side. Cable management still very important, especially the HMI has to be underneath, and that's why there is the isolation. It locks in place there, then like this, very stable. Uh, short screw, yes. Well, yes, this is for screw. Other, another um, place where you can use a too long screw is there. So I remember that I need to use a short screw there. So um, power to the <laughs> I have done something. So cheat cheat. Um, this I will place somewhere in the case. This black is the second connector. Then the switch goes here. The DC inject, the cable runs there. To be honest, I hope it works. I hope it still works. So, and then the battery, also like this. Hold there and later from the case. And this go here. And again, cable management. So, this is almost done. Very nice. Look at the side. Don't forget this cable. Now to the Pi. I'm using for this and Pi 4, 4 GB, and you see normal Pi doesn't come with these cables here. Um, these two cables are from the USB 2 ports. I want to use them internally, and I don't want to feed through cables or plug or um, extend the USB 3 ports, so I just soldered this on. Um, it doesn't harm the Pi, it's just... I like it better. This wire is for the um, fan, 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 fan. Yeah, need some cooling, of course. Oh, <laughs> looks funny. So, um, yeah, slightly modified. Power, I won't use the USB-C port. I hate USB Type-C, no. It's a good port, but for um, home projects, it's not so good. So I will use the header. And this is also, I would like if you have the USB ports and also as a header. So if you want to use it internally, you it's much easier. So otherwise I have to solder it on, but it's okay. I like it. Um, I need the bottom piece. The bottom piece. A fan. Uh, this fan is also from the Wii. Um, I like it. It's a good size and not loud, uh, it's quiet. 
I remember some. You remember this television series where always the guy looks above the fence? More power, right? Um, then another 3D printed part. This is my own design. Um, this is for the Pi 4. And I always build something with wood cases. Uh, this is not my first case that I built. Um, sometimes I start a project and stop it and throw it away. And before I was always cutting out the wood and use um, standoffs to, to mount a pie. And the cases you can download on Thinkiverse are always fully cases. And I just wanted something I need, to, I can glue on wood or screw. I always glue it. And just make a cutout in the wood that goes to the outer world. And so this comes out and it's very useful. So, just get the pipe, place it here, make sure the cables come out, cable management. N now, it's a little problem that the screws doesn't hold so well this time, because I cannot find my threaded inserts. They are somewhere. And I need the heat sink. This is very powerful, this one. I removed the loud mini fans because I don't need it. I tested it with, um, what did I run? Not in the bench, the one, the open source, Blender. I just, just use Blender and render, Blender render, the BMW scene. Um, and you, it takes a while, but it works. And it's overclocked in this, configuration to 2 gigahertz and it runs without any heat problems okay in the first version it runs with heat problems also with the fans because the case was fully closed no venting holes that is not a good idea yeah but the screws just hold enough give enough pressure to the case So you see here another hole, a hole in the case with some accrued parts. This is because of the memory card for the Pi. So it is, you can remove it without taking the whole case um, apart. This is also a new design, I'm not really new. For this I need a screw. This screw is also from the Acer. Yeah, recycling. Then this has this little lip. Here's an indent. And so I can just, and it's clear, and you can look through it. And you see the LEDs from the charger, charging unit. So, I oh, need to be cleaned. Yeah, not so important. Just threw this in. Yes, home improvement. You're right. uh, this is the English name. Uh, in Germany, this movie or this year's was called Hör mal wer da hämmert with Tim Taylor. More how um, been for 2000 or something like this. So, plus is on this side. Also something that can go horrible wrong. Um, don't forget the fan and again a little bit cable management so next step if someone else will open this should have a little Cheat sheet for the connections. And as I know myself, I may be printed on the wrong side. No, I printed on the right side, on the side that is sticky. And just stick it inside, like in the old televisions where you have the schematics inside. Oh, no, that's not the schematics, this is the layout. The schematics, schematics, schematics. 
also printed there. Hmm. But I think it's too big. Keep a little Easter egg in the case. Uh, no. No. Sort in the case later. So, go back to this part. To the main body. <laughs> Have it fold maybe. Yes, I'm folding it. Yeah, for future users and repair. Right. You don't need to repair it, you just rebuild it. Um, yeah, I folded it, but. Oh, little Easter egg underneath the battery, maybe. I know you should not do it like this. So, under the battery case is enough place. Should you make a function test at this point? No. No need. So, I think I have to hold it like this. Then, this is a little bit mission critical because of the length of the wires. Um, Oh, ah, yes, this is also a little. Uh, I was not careful. If I plug this in now, it won't destroy anything, but it won't work. Because this is the wire for the joystick port. It's red, white, green, black. And this one is for the keyboard. It's black, green, white, red. Yes, <laughs> a little trick. It should be not too easy. It's not a bug, it's a feature, of course. So, yeah. I should exercise this before. No, this direction is better. Going in there. Now, power to the pie. And. HDMI stay there. I know it looks very professional. So, more cable management. Time to close it. Time to check where the cables go. Yeah, some. Connectors sticking. It hold. More screws. Um, six it should be left. Six screws. One, two, three, four. Five, six. Should I try it first? Um, maybe it's better to try it first before I switch six screws. Maybe two, so it holds and doesn't fall apart. So the charger. That's called the power supply for one week. Then I need to check which one I can unplug here. Nothing happened. Every light is still on. Okay. Hmm. I can use this as a hand cam. Oh no. Um, plug it in. Okay. Blue light there. And you hear the... Ah, oh, this relay makes nice sound. Uh, the relay clicking, of course. Now it's a 
Now the battery is connected to the charger, like in the schematics. Fingers crossed. Yes, right. Fingers crossed. Um, the relay connect the battery to the charger. The blue light tell me it is charging. It is not a shortcut or something else. So first step is walking. And now I need to check something. I hope I bring it down. Charger for the phone. I'm missing one 3D printed part. Did I already put it out? Mm. No. No. Why don't you check something else? Oh, okay. Um, no. <laughs> No, no, I thought I'd bring it down. Okay, just wait a second. I'm back in about two minutes. I'm slow, five minutes. Just wait. Ah.
So I am back with coffee. Um, yes, I promise I'm not run up and search the part because I want a coffee. I just was up, searched the part, didn't find it, and thought, okay, then I can make a coffee while a uh, coffee while I search. And now I see the part oh, I was looking for. Yes, that is normal. Okay, turn it around. A charging works, so unplug the charger. Something. This is good. Yes. Yeah, right. Law. Okay, I, I designed this little three D printed part here. Maybe. Uh, let's switch to OBS. Mm -hmm. This oh, silver shiny. I also have one in black. Mm. Silver is better. And this is the power switch. Okay, it switches on. Okay, it says HDMI. The screen come alive. Uh, this is an image that is not so totally... How to say legal? Um, it's this Dam Damaso image with 128 gigabyte of retro games. Um, just for demonstration. And I need the controller to get out. So, are you ready? No, not really. It works. I just prepare also a recipe and image that we can just for out with this. So. I like this connector. Also, I'm modified. You cannot buy a controller like this. So, wait, wait, wait. Getting the screen. Drinking coffee. Yes. Oh, it's great. Quit. Shut down. Uh, this is some addition I will make soon. Um, the, the shutdown button, or with this, I'm not sure yet. Um, adding a little bit more functionality. Otherwise, you have to wait the pies down and then switch it off. So it's off. Turn it around. Oh, I mess up the screws. No. Four, four screws left. Wow, no, no screw missing, and no, it's not the wrong one again. One, it's not like that. Um, four, five. And six. So okay, just wanted to throw in a recipe and image for the and to present the bottom door trap door. I think on the Amiga it was it has a trap door. Oh, I like the Amiga. And now remove the micro SD card. We cannot remove it with this finger, or not with my fingers. Um, this is also something we should shortly talk about it. This micro SD card is a 128 gigabyte SanDisk Extreme Pro. It is quite expensive. Um, also for down in price now, but for this, this I bought for about 43 euro, almost the price of a pie, but it's worth any cent or every cent. Um, the other micro SD card I have prepared with the Raspbian image, it's a standard Lexa, not standard, it's also 633 times faster than a normal CD in reading, not in writing. And 
this is a big issue. So if you buy the cheap cards, you're really, uh, especially the Pi 4, you slow it down. And this card, like also like the, uh, get a message from card work. That's the work phone. Um, this card's much cheaper, so the normal SanDisk um, Ultra, it also sounds fast, reads about 90 megabyte, but it writes about 10 maybe, and you get 128 for less than 20 euro here in Germany, in our shop, or uh, sometimes when we have an offer for 14.99, but it's slow as hell. You can, also, you can already um, see it when you write an image on the card. Um, how slow it is writing and this card is um, so fast and yeah very good one but for the test I will search it I will search it I will know that I will search it um, for the test we are using the cheaper Alexa one um, can I find the Wait. I know I should make the hole bigger This is for the next project. But this time I remember that I need something to change the SD card. Uh, last time you have to take it totally apart to go to the SD card. So this is already an, an, an not enhancement, but it's already an enhanced version. And it's much easier to change than for projects where you can yeah I had the cheap cards doing emulation right um, you can also feel it in Raspbian when you use Raspbian um, Raspbian is much more responsive with the with the professional series from Sundis and when you power off without um, switching the Raspberry Pi uh, without runterfahren um, shutting down uh, you get more often problems with the cheap cards, the slow cards, than with this card. This card is very robust, but yet more than double of the price, of course. But you should get those. Um, I think here in Germany the cards are, as we have very low price for memory, uh, especially when when I'm with my wife in China, and you go to shopping to the normal places, not to the special electronic places. Uh, memory sticks or USB sticks, memory cards are very, very expensive. You won't believe they come from China, but they are in China. They are so, so expensive. That is crazy. Coffee. Sorry. No, I'm not making um, advertisement for Disney. This is not sponsored by Disney. It's sponsored by no one and no man. Um, this is just also from work. Um, Sometimes in the year Disney has some actions and if you buy three movies you get a cup, but people don't buy three movies, so often we have a lot of these cups left and then we give it to the MPVs. So it's a good size, 220 milliliter of coffee. But I don't use one 220 milliliter with one coffee. I use two coffees each, 110 milliliter. So it's more strong. <laughs> So, um, still one thing is missing. <laughs> need to remove the joystick and get the last 3D printed parts. This is the latch. Hatch. Come latch. Latch. I like my logo. Um, this is the latch. The box is of course something to close. And it's also 3D printed and downloaded by Thinkiverse. I would show you the links, but I didn't find it anymore. Uh, I found all the other ones that I was searching at this day. And I come over this. But doesn't matter. And another screws. This eight beautiful dirty screws. This eight is cool. Um, the front camera. By the way, this is the work phone. Uh, 
no uh, Nokia. Uh, note something from Samsung. Oh, I hate Android. And but it has good cameras. Even the front camera is great. Um, this black screws are also savaged from somewhere. And this was the only one I have eight of it. So if I lose one, I'm in trouble because then I don't have any screw of this kind anymore. Um, Everyone who is electronic knows this boxes. Every everyone. This is my screw box. By the way, this is the back of MacBook Core Duo screws. Um, I get five or six broken ones, very cheap job lot in um, eBay, and take it apart, get parts out of it. I like parts and um, these are the screws so and here is some um, also assorted smaller ones and then big ones long I remember this I think this was from Xbox no idea oh it's an LED um, I should clean up sometimes Oh, this one is Gosh. So, and this is one of three of these boxes. So, let me see. Um, mounting the latches. Focus a little bit, I hope so. Yeah, it's the right approach. Hope so. I know I should not turn off this right tree, really. I should get one bag and then, yeah, it's very good for old cases, really. Um, and with this trick, you can see. How many people, especially how many electronic YouTubers uh, doing retro things, watching friend plant, friend plant, no, <laughs> watching friend lab. Um, she's fantastic in those things. And she explained, especially when you have old cases, you go one back and one, and then you other until the screw fall into the original hole. But this is not vintage, this is wood. Um, but oh, I feel it in the pre printed part. So we are getting close to the end of this session. I used to go uh, electronics dump for stuff. Yeah, but um, <laughs> that is a little bit complicated in Germany. Um, long, long way ago, time ago, and I was little. Um, about you know, 30 years ago, I also go with my, with my granddad on, and alone when we have Spermel. Um, people put out their electronic dump or the dump, not the normal trash, out of the street <laughs> or once every three months. And I was looking for old parts, the old television, and oh, oh my gosh, I remember oh, oh many weird stuff. But then we have very strong regulations for garbage in Germany. 
and so it's not possible anymore. Well, you, sometimes you see something, but it's not good. And so um, I, I get the electronics dump from my friends who know, okay, you can use this, you don't store it in the garbage, you can get it. And sometimes for interesting things, I'm, I'm looking in eBay. Um, I'm just looking for broken things uh, and not with the intention to repair it. Um, just with the intention for to have fun. So that is how I get a lot of parts and some things I have really, really, really long. Um, even I'm working in a very big electronic store in here in Neubi and we have always a lot of electronic garbage. It's not allowed to take it. Of course, if I would ask, but then other if you say hey, why he can get stuff out or things out uh, it's not allowed we, we have listings what we have in this garbage and the um our dienstleister sign for that we um that he gets out and um it is destroyed on the right way that is a little bit weird but it's okay so the box is finished um Oh, this battery is running empty, so I changed the charger from this phone to this phone. Ugh. So, oh, yeah, it's not allowed to take this things, and it's okay. Um, because sometimes we have, of course, also um, garbage from customers. Um, electronic short verordnung in Deutschland. It means if customers buy something new, they're allowed to throw their electronic garbage in the shop where they buy it. But the shop has to make sure that the things get recycled. And that is also one reason you cannot get out the electronic garbage here. It's not like um, if you watch EUV plot, he has the dumpster room and you get everything out there. Um, it is not in Germany like this, especially not with computer stuff. Of course, you can get out the HED, but if you're a big company like we are, we need a um, certificate that the customer um, files or files with customer sync are deleted from the computer. So we give them to specialized companies who delete it and give us certificate, certificate that everything is deleted right. So even I know how to delete an hard drive so no one can access it. Um, two ways, you should use a wipe for software or you just fit it with a hammer and get the platter out. Um, it's not allowed uh, because I'm not certified to just delete the files. And these companies, if you give them the whole old computer, uh, last time we throw out i3s, um, the small form factors, HPs, with i3 and i5s, um, third generation and 8 gigabyte RAM and 250 hard drives, very nice machines. Um, if you give them the machines, the whole machine, you don't pay for the service, you don't pay for the leading files. It's like you pay them with the computer. And they sell these computers later for about 100 euro, 120 euro in the internet, or sometimes if it is better machines for 200. And so we have a very strict recycling process here in Germany. Uh, let's make a hobby harder. If after tones and the regulations are changing here for that, making it harder to fly. Uh, yes, <laughs> regulations, right. Uh, my cousin is also flying these things, but he's here, not drones, he's flying the um, fuel-powered jet engines, very interesting, and he also needs a lot of permissions, and it's not, you're not allowed to fly this everywhere, so um, it's not easy. And yeah, a long time ago, it was easier for us, or for, especially for hobbies and get things. But on the other hand, when I was about... Okay, I'm now 44. 44? 90, 70, yeah, 44. I'm now 44 years old. Uh, when I was about 10, with 10, I get my first soldering iron, the Weller TCP, or a very nice soldering iron. Um, it was like, you cannot buy parts. It, or you can buy it, but it was, it takes two weeks be, 
to, to, to deliver it from Germany, not from China. And it was quite expensive. For one resistor, you go to the catalog and you buy resistors. You buy the standard there. But if you want to buy a standard resistor, very good. If you want to buy a standard resistor, resistor, resistor like this, you say, okay, I want one. <laughs> and one was about 10 penny. Uh, today's money about 5 cent, but it was way back, so much more. Five penny or five cent for one of those, and it took two weeks to deliver. And you have to order for at least fifty day mark to get delivered, and you pay for delivering. It was very hard. Um, simple kits like a um, blinklicht and a multi vibrator. You have two, two LEDs, two transistors, two capacitors. This already cost about fifteen day mark. And nowadays, the parts, the kits, everything is so cheap from China. And the quality is not bad. And um, it changed a lot. So nowadays, it's the, the entry, the, the step you have to make to become a hobbyist in electronic is very easy and very cheap. And multimeters, um, my favorite one. Um, the 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 Anang 8008 uh, with 9,999 as a four full digits. It's 15 euro. My first multimeter was also a digital one. No, it wasn't analog one with nothing. From, not a good brand. Was much more expensive than this one. Uh, my granddad has one, and we don't know where it goes now. I think my uncle take it. Um, this was hundreds of euro and was not a good brand. So these things are getting very cheap and very nice to get our oscilloscopes. My first one was an um, Ame Hemek used one a um, long time ago. It was thousands of DMAC. And now you get a nice digital one for less than 300 and it's okay. You don't need the fancy expensive stuff to make this hobby. Just get the parts. Uh, only parts that I have that is expensive is my Vera. Vera, this is Vera, right? My Vera screwdriver set. This is quite expensive, but I like it. And my soldering iron, the Ursa Icon. Yes, after about 30, no, about 30 years, I changed from my Vela TCP, not temperature, also temperature controlled, but with fixed temperature to the Ursa Icon Pico with very small one, and I like it. Um, so, yeah, become easier. That is my thinking. Also, memory comes so easy. And there we are. When I have customers, oh, why this hard drive is 50 euro? It's a one terabyte hard drive. Oh, and the SSDs are so expensive. Yes, not really. Sometimes when I'm in a good mood, I tell them, okay, I bought my first SSD. It was an OC set agility with 64 gigabyte. I paid 400 euro for it, and you, you're complaining because you pay 90 euro for one terabyte okay so um enough blah 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 and the time is running oh one one hour live stream hmm. i like it so opening the case yes you see it. Oh, sorry um the 3d printed batch it is um i have a video in my diction in my library in my videos um, something like this with a Raspberry Pi logo, and this is even smaller. And I'm um, using uh, this is acrylic, and I just painted one side with silver spray paint, and so um, it is reflective on this side. Then in this batch, I uh, just sand it the other side, and then I attach little little LEDs on the side. So oh, let me switch on. It's lighting. It's 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 lit. It's leuchted. 
that's why I need power. So, and where are the lights I used? Oh. There are even also LEDs. Oh, I remember my first blue LED. I pay 10 d mark for my first blue LED. One, not 10 or something. It was one LED. It was blue. It was so new. Blue LED. Never seen blue LED before. Oh, yeah, that was the time. Mm. Good and bad. So not all the old times are good times, to be honest. Sometimes they are. Yeah. Uh, where are the LEDs? I'm a little bit afraid to get something out here because there may be something drop. And I thought I'd put the LEDs somewhere. Oh. Again, searching something. Always the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The yellow one, but doesn't matter. This one, um, here. Yeah, these are LEDs. Uh, you can see the tip of them. This is the LEDs I use for it, and it makes very nice lightning. Light, lightning. I think this is. Yes. Um, so this is on the side, two sides, and lit, lit the lid, light the lid, make it glow blue, blue light. So opening again, but I think now, I think I broke something with the uh, other card. Let me check what the Raspberry is doing. No, it's just doing something. I need to wait. Ah, oh, there it was in sleep mode, and I need to connect a mouse. Ah. <laughs> the mouse is connected to the laptop. Ta -da! And I need to use one of the USB 3 ports, otherwise it won't fit. Next, country. Yeah, money. Oh, I didn't prove it. Okay. Um, this is Deutschland. Finland. Ah, oh, German. I. Language. Not German. Oh. Ah, this English language there. Yeah. Berlin, yeah, we can use Berlin, and it's a words, it's a German keyboard. Okay, next. La 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 Password. Password. Enter password. Rasp. I'm sure it will. I don't want a password to be honest. No, oh, I just use my birthday. One nine seven six. Yes. Um, good. This screen show yeah it has black border. I'm using the auto setup. Select wireless network. Yes. We are selecting. No Weibo. Hi. Yeah, who are you? Some bots. <laughs> If you are a bot, you won't be happy on this channel. Only one viewer that is very active. So hello again to Joel, Joel, Joel Adam, Adamas. Um, yeah, you can already read my um, whatever. So my wireless password. If someone visit me in Germany, you can just know my wireless password. Um, if we print it in the in our house. For guests, we have a big sign. Hello, guests. Uh, our wireless name is this, and this is the password. Don't need to ask. You can use it, of course. Okay. Update software. Should we update? No, just skip. Restart. Uh, restart sounds good. Oh, it works. It works. I am from Australia. Australia. Okay, not Austria. Australia. The the land of uh, Dave Jones, EV Pop. Cool. <laughs> Hi to Australia. Hi from Germany. 
Restarting. Dun, 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 um, of course, we could go through the whole setup process for emulation station, maybe. But I'm really, I don't know what I should talk anymore. Or we build something else. I have a lot of kids behind me. Or we take something apart. Or we play just a little bit. to check phone. Oh, we can get a message from work. Yeah, we stop I guess, of course. So, uh, I hate Microsoft Teams. It is so unübersichtlich, also not very intuitive to use. Ich habe nicht mehr viel um, But we have to use it. Yeah. So. Yeah, there is it. Respian, working. It's working. It's alive. Um, I should test the sound. Oh, I have an idea. And this is why I say use the fast cards, not the slow cards that I have now inside of this. With this card, you won't have so much wait time. It is m really much faster. Of course, and I didn't overclock the Pi now, just now, but no need. Um, just want to try something. Um, I think I used the German. I thought I used the German keyboard. Uh, doesn't matter. Uh, GameCube, I to, to be honest, I have no idea. Um, I think there is a project that uses and N64 is not a big problem. And most, um, how to say, I liked emulation for Dreamcast. Dreamcast was even the best um, console way back. And this works very fine at 2 gigahertz. And there are some other projects now, and you can play Serious Sam, the PC, Serious Sam 2 on the Pi 4 with 2 gigahertz, and it is great. It runs really, really great. It's unbelievable. But, um, GameCube, I think Dolphin Emulator is, it's not totally working now, but you can look this up at emulationstation.com. They have a list of every emulator that is running, but, oh, can you see the screen a little bit? Wait, let me just search. Dolphin Emu Pi Pi 4. Dolphin Emulator on Raspberry Pi 4 using Supreme Duo Retro Pi, whatever that is. We and GameCube on. Oh, something was happening here. No, everything is fine. Yeah, Dreamcast didn't get it. That is. I think I was too late with it. And like, yeah. GameCube on the Raspberry Pi 4, 10 games tested. Yeah, it looks like it is possible, but I think it's not out of the box. Um, you need to make. You have to. Um, I forget the name of it. It is possible. That's easy way to say. But it's not out of it's almost not out of the box. So but I wanted to try something else. How does it play YouTube? I fought myself. So I can't forget him code. That's not a good idea. Oh, I can. I can just go live. So, no, I want to go to the another. To a very short project because Joel asked me for it or just asked for the 3D batch. So, this. Hello and good morning or good evening, whatever time. I go to autopilot now. Today we are going to. Gonna, 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 Today we will build together this Raspberry Pi logo batch 
Um, I made it for a project, for an upcoming project, uh, where I wanted the logo of the Raspberry Pi. And it started out with something I printed, with the 3D printer, designed it in Cinema 4D. That is really that useful, that so it's nice now in an, I call it the autopilot um, zinger. And okay, the autopilot, autopilot doesn't want. Just click on play again. Why? I have good internet connection. Where's your problem? Uh, bum, bum, bum. Good morning or good evening, whatever time you watch this video. Today we are gonna gonna gonna. gonna yeah. Do a bit so this is also a 3D batch or a batch with batch. almost um, the same technique, just with five millimeter project, LEDs. Um, where I wanted the logo of the Raspberry Pi, and it started out with. Something I printed with so. 3D printer, designed it in Cinema 4D. And then I thought, hey, it would be nice when it has some light. So let me switch mm -hmm. off the room light or I can light switch off the light bit and switch on the logo. You can see I use oh, some face color changing LEDs to do this. And it goes through uh. different kinds of colors. Yet, it looks I think I'm using too much things in wireless, so okay. I have problems with streaming. I should stop this. Um, but you can see the Pi 4 has not big trouble with with running um, running videos. Uh, but the loading times are much longer than with my the OBS says no problems with what, 8,000 kilobit per second. Only YouTube is. Hey, 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 hey. Um, now it works better. Okay. So, yes. Um, this is the Raspberry Pi box. Battery runtime is about, I have no idea to be honest. Um, it's a 4000 milliamp, milliamp hour battery with 8.4 volts, so a totally about 36 watt hours. Uh, the Pi in the display, on, uh, when it runs in full power, takes about 8 watt, so 36 per watt. Um, calculator. Oh my gosh, it needs batteries. Um, 36 divided by 8. Yeah, about four and a half hour battery lifetime should be possible with this. Uh, maybe a little bit longer because it's not always running in full full load, something like this. Um, yeah, this is the case. I should get the high tech feature called linear. Or ruler and show you the size. It is, and be honest in the planning. It's not like I just plan and then say this has to be this size. It's just oh, I put this keyboard there and the display and this there, and then this is the size I want to use, and I just cut it. And yeah, that is going on. So because this, I have 235 millimeters. Or 23.5 centimeters in the width. I have about 130 millimeters in the depth, or 13 centimeters. In the high, we have 70 millimeters, about 7 centimeters in the close. The weight. One kilo. Underneath, mm. you have this little fan from the wheel. You can put it in your finger, doesn't no, nothing happens. It's safe. Should really print a part for this. You have the nice little 
cut out with the acrylic paint. Very important. And you can see the lights. Oh, I like the blue lights again. Uh, this is not the charging. Oh, so I wait. I can just plug in the charger. More lights. Right. More lights now with the charger plug in. And because we are charging and using power for the Pi, the red light there comes on a little bit because we are almost at the 2.5 amp um, limit of the, what I said. So, what else? Um, you have little rubber feet because the fan needs air. In the back, we have the two hinges, 3D printed, the one joy port with the special joystick, not the standard one. Like that. It's good. You can of course use any USB things and you can I think you can use a PS4 controller also. And we have the vent holes. This side is empty. The front with the two latches. Oh, good sound. Um open. Close. Open. Should have something like a read switch to switch off the screen when it is closed. Oh, no ideas. There's still a little bit of place inside. And what else? The Pi on this side and the DC port for the Wii power supply. Yeah, that's all. I hope you enjoy the video. And that's all for today. I hope it doesn't take one month again for my next video, but sometimes I just sit here and just put things together. It's hobby, and then I'm not in the not in the mood is wrong word. Um, I forgot to set up. Oh, I have to set up so many things um, to stream, to live stream. So I don't do it. But maybe next time I still have one kit I want to build, get it cheap and something to take apart. I still find something. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Um, click on the bell things and subscribe, whatever. Okay, bye bye. That's all. I need to find the thing to stop it. Other mouse. Should we make an outro? No, no, we just stop. Oh, my weights. Also something. Um,